Good morning. My name is Kimberly Bishop, and I'm Associate State Director for Community Outreach at AARP Michigan. I'd like to welcome you to our monthly series, our monthly rhythm series, as we explore the relationship between music and brain health with the help of percussionist Kevin Bujo Jones. Today is a special day. It's Juneteenth. And in honor of Juneteenth, we are going to skip some of the traditional introduction and go directly to the drumming. I'd like to introduce Kevin and we'll talk a little bit about brain health at the end. I would also like to encourage those of you who, are, um, who have questions to please post your questions in the comments section and we will ask Kevin as many questions as we can. So. Kevin, are you ready to join us? Yes, good, good morning and happy Juneteenth. Yes. So um, I'd just like to introduce um, my assistant for today, <laughs> my soon to be wife. Oh, that sounds so great. Yes, it does. Um, Martine Dalton. Um, we're actually, we're getting married uh, next Sunday. So um, everything is happening at the right at around the same time. We have Juneteenth uh, next week. We have a wedding, right? You know, so we're we're um, under a lot of a uh, lot of a uh, lot of pressure here. <laughs> anyway, congratulations I'm once again, and thank you for spending Juneteenth and um, what eight days before your wedding. Before your wedding, your wedding, your wedding. Definitely. So. Um, uh, Martine is here um, to help us out um, because obviously, um, if we were live and in person, um, we could in, we could interact and play together. But since we're still virtual, um, it's better so you can hear how the drums sound together. Um, so let's get started. Does everybody have a drum? If you don't have a drum, what you could do is to get a, oh, I moved my stuff. <laughs> if, if you have, um, yeah, yeah. So if you have a container, um, uh, like a, I have these coffee make containers that I use, uh, some kind of container, Tupperware uh, container. Um, and if you don't want a drum, you could take um, something like, Morton Seesaw, <laughs> or the best one yet, Orville Redenbacher, popcorn. So this makes a wonderful shaker. So you can do it like this, turn it to the side and play it like this. Right? Or even if this little salt shaker. They sound really great. Um, and you can um, sort of do your thing. If you have a paint can or some sort of Tupperware um, container um, big enough, just set it between uh, your, uh, your, your thighs and, and you can play on it, okay? So we covered a lot in the last couple of months. Um, and so I want to go over some of the things that we covered in the last couple of months, which were number one is how to make a sound out of the drum, right? So there's three basic sounds that you can get out of a drum. There's a tone sound. So try it. So you make this tone sound like this. You um, hold your hand flat and you come down on the drum. And when you come down on the drum, you should be right about here. Strike the drum. Right. So take your other hand off. Right. Right. So everybody, we're going to go one.
tone sound. Okay, so the next sound that we're gonna try is called a bass sound. And the bass sound is produced by sliding your hand, putting your hand just striking the drum with your hand just kind of towards the middle, okay? And you're gonna use your palm and all of your fingers. So you're not gonna go like this. You're gonna, you're gonna place your uh, hand, your palm, all your fingers towards the middle of the drum. It doesn't have to be way up here, like just right about here, okay? So let's try that. Are you ready? Let's do it. One, two, three, four, bass. 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 Bass, 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 bass. Good. So we have how many sounds now? Two of the three basic sounds. Tone and bass. Okay? So the last sound, which we haven't really covered and talked about that much, was the slap sound. Um, so the slap sound is a lot more difficult. If you could do it and you have a drum with you, you can try this, okay? So when you play a slap, you wanna, you're gonna come down, you're gonna hit here, this part of your hand, it's gonna kinda hit first, and then the tips of your finger, right? The last digit of your finger is gonna hit, right? Creates a high pitch sound. So the pressure comes here and you just kind of play it almost like a whip. So you want to try it? Yeah. So you don't want to hit in here. You want to hit here and then here. Yeah. So you want to hit here and then here. And this this part you're not going to. Right, in between. You're right. So you don't want to go like this, but you want to just. Good. Okay, so um, let's go over some of the rhythms that we learned in the last couple of months. So I think I started in March. We started this series in March, April, May, and now June. This is the fourth one. So the first rhythm that we learned was called cuckoo. Cuckoo uh, is a, um, basically it's a, a celebration rhythm. Some call it a fishing dance. Um, so what you want to do is to play, normally we play a slap, but if you can't play a slap, you can play a tone. Slap, and then bass, and then two tones. So you're going to play slap, bass, bass, slap, bass,
I don't know if anybody who has come before remembers what we call the signal or the break signal. In African music, especially in African drumming, they have uh, what we call a signal or a break. It's, it works much like a traffic signal. Um, it's musical and you hear, when you hear this signal, you know something is about to change. You're start, you're gonna start or you're gonna stop. And the signal is used um, for the dancers inside of their choreography. Okay, so it's actually a marking to tell you to go, to stop, to change, or whatever. And it sounds like this. Can you play that? Do it again. Good. Okay, everybody at home with me. One. Two, three, four. One, two, three, again. One, two, three, again. One, two, three, again. One, two, three, again. One, two. Again. One, two, three, again. One, two, three, again. Okay, so now we're going to start the rhythm with the signal and then end the rhythm with the signal. Are you ready? All right, let's go. One, two, ready, play. So we are going to talk a little bit about polyrhythms. So what is a polyrhythm? Poly, as you know, is a prefix for many. And rhythm, obviously, you know what a rhythm is, right? So many rhythms, polyrhythm means many rhythms played at the same time. And um, that's one characteristic of um, African drumming, African diaspora drumming, whether you're in West Africa or Central Africa, Congo, or in Cuba or Brazil. Um, many rhythms happening at the same time, okay? So we're gonna try this. We're gonna learn another rhythm that goes inside of cuckoo because, because cuckoo is not just... This is a common rhythm that's played among many different rhythms inside of the uh, uh, West African diaspora. Okay, so um, Guinea, Mali, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, um, many different places, okay, Burkina Faso, etc. So I'm going to teach you another part. Pretty easy, but when you put them together, that's the hard part, okay? So some of you can play the regular rhythm, some of you can play the rhythm that we just played, and then some of you can play the second part. Okay, so we're gonna play two basses, bass, bass. Try that. Bass, bass. Then, right, 
tone, 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 tone. So we're going to play bass, bass, tone, 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 tone. Bass, bass, tone, tone, tone. Bass, bass, good. Did everybody get that? If you didn't, um, just um, type in, please go slower, Mr. Bujo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now here goes the hard part. Now, um, for some people, um, much like singing harmony um, in music, um, they find it very difficult, like myself. <laughs> Every time I sing harmony, I go play this, I sing the same note as the person next to me when I'm supposed to be singing another note. Um, full disclosure, I'm terrible <laughs> at it. Uh, <laughs> I think I got a D in solfege in music school. Anyway, um, so we're gonna have, I'm gonna have uh, Martine play the rhythm we just played. Bass, bass, tone, tone, tone. And I'm going to play slap bass tom tom, slap bass tom tom. So you can hear how both of these parts fit together. So, um, you want to try it? You want to start off? You think you can hold the rhythm without it? I'll try it. Okay. It's going to sound good. <laughs> I'll try it. It's going to sound good if you can get it. Okay? Okay. All right. So, let's start out. So keep something else. Um, normally, I want to say as a, a full disclosure, normally when you play and you see traditional djembe, or what they sometimes people say djembe orchestra, but djembe and uh, djembe, you'll see maybe two, three, four, sometimes five or six djembe players playing, but you also see um, you also see a doom doom, uh, a set of doom dooms, uh, drums that are two sided, played with a stick, um, and sometimes they play it 
with a bell and a stick, or sometimes they just play it with two sticks. So um, we're going to introduce that probably next month in the coming months uh, to you. So um, just to just to be uh, have full disclosure, because you know the way I teach is not just about uh, everybody learning how to play tone slap and bass and etc. But I want you to have some of the real aspects of traditional drumming. Um, okay, so we also did another rhythm. Um, uh, we did two other rhythms. Um, one is called uh, Isokota, um, which is a Congolese rhythm. But um, I'm gonna, we're gonna play it on djembe. So in Congo, they generally don't play djembe. They play a long cylindrical drum called ngoma. Ngoma is uh, the traditional drum from the Congo kingdom, Congo culture, both Congos, the Democratic Republic of Congo and um, the Republic of Congo, which is what they call Congo Brazzaville. But anyway, so um, I just want to be clear that they usually don't play this on djembe's, but since we have djembe's, we're going to learn the rhythm anyway. Um, 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 we started out with a bass, a tone, and a slap. Bass, tone, slap. Bass, tone, slap. Very good. One, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Good. Good. So that's the first part. Okay, so now the second half, this is like two halves. We have the first half, bass tone slap, then the second half, bass slap tone tone slap. Bass slap tone tone slap. Let me try that. Bass slap. Again, 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 again. So now we're going to combine it with the first half. Bass, boom, slap, and then bass, slap, boom, boom, slap. Okay? So let's try it. So it's going to sound like this, actually. Bass, boom, slap, bass, slap, boom, boom, slap. Okay? Let's try it. One, two, three, four.
see we have a question from Jan. Okay. So, Jan, the slap, very difficult to do. It's not easy, you know. The tone is a lot easier. So when you're playing the drum, your tone should come here. If you have a djembe, it's from, your knuckle should be about here, right? Okay? When you play a slap, your hand doesn't change that much, but what you're doing is you don't, when you play a slap, you should be able to, to I'll come around this way. This is, this is hitting and this is hitting, here and here. Can you see that? Okay. Your fingers. So, yeah, so it's a little bit of an arch. So you're not really putting any pressure. You're not putting any pressure here. Okay, let me turn back around because I'm getting too close to the camera. Um, okay. No pressure here on this digit, these digits here. The pressure is coming here. So you're hitting, it's almost like a whip. Um, I'm not too familiar with whips. I never really, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not into that sort of thing. But anyway, so if you know how you, you know, whip, right? The, the tip doesn't go first, the tip goes last, right? Or if a better one, if you shoot a, a, a basketball and you, you sort of shooting it and you, like your follow through, it's the wrist, right? But when you come down, you shouldn't be, it should be your hand should be, fingers should be spread apart slightly, a little bit more slightly than you do when you play a tone. So, that's actually a, what we call a closed slap. So there's many different types of slaps. I didn't, I didn't mean to get into this today, but um, since the question is put out there, the slap, open slap, closed slap, you kind of leave your hand on the drum. They play this technique a lot when they play conga or goma and other drums of that type. But you can also play it on a djembe too. There's nothing, there's no rule that says, oh, no, that's, you can't play it like that. Um, but generally speaking, when you're playing djembe, you want to play, be, you're, you're, you're playing open slaps mostly, unless style change or some sort of different kind of, kind of rhythm. So, my hand, my fingers are apart, and this is where the pressure comes down. Okay? So, now we're gonna, um, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna move on because uh, uh, time is of the essence, all right? So we're gonna learn uh, another rhythm, and I'm not sure if we covered this one, but what I'd like to do is to teach you some general rhythm patterns for djembe that are, let's say, uh, kind of, that go with a lot of different rhythms. So one of those rhythm patterns, uh, we play in a rhythm called Lamba, and about 40 or 50 other rhythms as well. <laughs> lots and lots of, but this is a common rhythm, okay? So I'm just gonna call it Lamba so you can identify it in the future, but it goes with, a million rhythms anyway so anyway um this one starts out it's five strokes to this rhythm three slaps and two tones okay so this is the reason why i wanted to teach you and to look look at the slap sound um in this uh session today all right so 
we're going to play. I'm right-handed, so I play it like this. Some people play it differently. As long as you can produce the sound, it's not, there's a general rule, but you can go on your own. But I play it this way. This is the way I was taught. So slap with your right hand, slap with your left hand. Boy, I'm having trouble with my computer. I'm so sorry, guys. I keep getting this notification. So, sorry. Slap with your right hand, slap with your left hand, and then slap with your right hand. Don't worry about the sound so much. Um, if you can't produce the sound, it took me over six months when I first started playing to even get a slap sound out of the drum. So, you know, if you can get it, fine. Just do your best, okay? So we're going to play. Slap, slap, slap. Slap, slap, slap. So, try that. So, right, left, right. Uh huh. Right, left, right. Uh huh. Very good. Now, the two, the last two notes are two tones. So just play right, left. Okay, so in context, we're going to play slap, 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 tom, tom, slap, 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 tom, tom, slap, slap, slap. So we have a question from Nancy. Nancy wants us to pan backwards. I don't know how to pan backwards so she could see what the drum looks like. <laughs> so, but I mean, um, I would have to go way far away, but this is what the drums look like. These are my djembe's, our djembe's. Um, this one is from Guinea. It's made out of uh, kadi wood. Um, it's strung with rope. Nancy, can you see this? Let us know if you could see this. Um, this one um, I got from my, uh, bought from my friend, Mustafa, um, who is uh, from Guinea, from Conakry. And um, he actually uh, sold me the shell to this drum. This one is a very, very heavy drum. Hadi is 
uh, um, very heavy wood, very sturdy, very heavy wood. Um, has a great sound too. Um, but I only bought the shell and I had my teachers, uh, one of my teachers, uh, Mr. Ozzy Simmons, uh, helped me put this together and then I had it redone uh, by a friend of mine named Vado uh, Vilman. Uh, he redid this for me before I moved to Michigan and it's been okay ever since. So this is goatskin wood from the Hadi tree and um, you know the rope, metal rim, etc. So this is traditional djembe, okay? Um, the same with this drum. Um, this drum was done by uh, Vado, uh, my friend Vado, my big brother, Vado, and um, very nice djembe, okay? Um, same thing, just a little bit smaller, okay? Is that why it has a different sound? Um, because of the size? Yeah, the size and also um, it's the not the tune. I didn't. I haven't tuned it high, really high, because in a djembe orchestra, when you're playing djembe's, you want you don't want all the the djembe's to sound the same. You want the djembe's to have different tonalities. So because you have a uh, uh, if you have all the same note or around the same note. You, it won't, the rhythms that you play in concert with each other won't be as effective. They won't sound, they won't sound as effective. So I'm, harmony. yeah. So I'm actually going to show you, demonstrate that now. So this drum, I call this drum my ride or die because <laughs> this drum has been every place. It's been all around the world. Um, That's the baby. Yeah, the baby. Um, this drum I've had for many, many years, and it's traveled to Europe and all over uh, uh, Central and South America and, and the Caribbean and all over the place. Anyway, so this one is just tuned a little bit lower. Um, so we're going to go back to um, the rhythm cuckoo, and I'm going to play a part. So can you play the... Slap first. Why can I not get this right? Okay, so okay, do because you're playing, you're left handed and you're playing right handed. Yeah, I'm watching your hands <laughs> and I shouldn't. So you can play, play a right handed. Uh -huh. Right, left, right, left. to uh, the, the rhythm that we were learning, okay? So let's start it out. Um, 
Let's start it out with the, the signal. Um, for this one, we're going to just start it out with. Now, when you play it, what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to play play the signal. But we're going to play it a little slower. But when you play it slower, it has sort of what we call kind of a swing feel to it. Okay. Uh, Okay, ready? Are you ready? I'm gonna try. Okay. <laughs> from Jean or Jeannie Jean repeat the beats for the signal again okay I will do that okay so first part ba, 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 ba. Kuro, ko, do, ko. Kuro, ko, do, ko. Okay. Okay, so if you're not, I'm being fancy with it, you could just play. I'm playing a flam, what they call a flam in the beginning. But you could just play. Okay, that's the first part. Second half. So we're going to put it together. Here we go. Again, one, two, ready, play. One, two, ready, play. signal and then we're going to play uh Mamban and I see we're running out of time. Wow, it's 11:47 already. Wow. Wow. That went fast. Okay, here we go. Signal, rhythm, ta kita to kota, kita to kota, kita to kota. Okay? So we're going to play that and then we'll play the signal again and then I'll stop and actually answer questions, okay? Are you ready? Good. I didn't hear you, but so if you're not, it's too bad. <laughs> anyway, anyway, here we go.
Very good. Okay, so next time we will try to have a, um, I don't know, we'll try to bring some doom, uh, the doom doom drums, so you can hear everything in context, because that's important for djembe. But if you just have a shaker or some sort of Tupperware container, anything like that, you know, you just do the best you can. I advise you to go get a drum. You can look online um, or go to, you know, um, I can recommend a few places where you can go if you want to spend a little bit of money. Um, some, yeah, get a, you know, get a small one. I have drums here, like this one that I use, uh, small djembe's. Um, you know, they're not professional, but they're, they're good enough to start on learning. These, this is really, really small. And, um, this one cost me about, um, I think it was like $120, something like that. Um, uh, you know, you don't want to go online and, and spend for a professional drum. And you can, but you know, a gym base can run, you know, eight, $900, um, for really, really good ones, sometimes even more. You know, it depends on the work and craftsmanship involved uh, with the drum. So anyway, so we're here to ask some, uh, or answer some questions uh, that you may have. Um, I'm sorry if we're, it's a little bit dark, but we have all the lights on in the room and it's like really, really dark here in Michigan. Uh, so I'm going to get a little bit closer to the camera so you can see us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You guys are fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and I'm sure you've read some of the comments. You're getting lots of congratulations uh, uh -huh. and, and blessings on your upcoming wedding. But as we close, I'd yeah. like to kind of go full circle and share seven recommendations from the Global Council on Brain Health's report, Music on Our Minds, The Rich Potential of Music to Promote Brain Health and Mental Well-Being. Number one, explore technology that can enable you to listen to music across multiple devices, such as your phone or television. Try music apps such as Spotify or Pandora, which will offer suggestions of new music you might enjoy. Two, if you have tinnitus, try music to help mask it. Tinnitus is the perception of constant or periodic noise in the ears that increases in prevalence with age and hearing loss and affects about 15 to 20% of people over age 60. Three, when many other abilities are compromised through frailty or ill health, try enjoying music as one of the best ways to engage in a pleasurable activity. Based on the comments that we've seen, this is, this is definitely a pleasurable activity. Number four, consider using music to encourage mindfulness and minimize negative thinking. Music is often used as part of cognitive behavioral therapy techniques to help improve mood, anxiety, and depression. Five, caregivers for people living with dementia should try to use music the person likes as a way to help them reduce anxiety depression, and agitation, and help connect them with loved ones. Six, nursing facilities should use evidence-based music therapy, incorporating music that residents enjoy to reduce symptoms of depression, anxiety, and agitation, while decreasing the use of antipsychotic drugs and sedatives, providing music um, that will induce feelings of nostalgia, happiness, and calm without the downside risks of medications. And seven, implement or participate in community music programs that can have beneficial effects for many people, including individuals living with dementia and their caregivers. So, Ujo, we have questions. And because you answered so many questions during the session, we are not going to answer as many um, today as we might normally, but I'm going to get a few questions in before we close. So um, a question from Diana. She wants to know, what's it like to go to an outside drum circle? So I'm not sure if I'm looking at the question. I'm not sure what she means by outside drum circle, um, outside, like outside in the park um, kind of drum circle. 
So drum circles um, can be really productive um, just to sort of get you in sort of the, the mood for it. Um, however, um, there's nothing like going to something that's a little bit more organized where you can actually learn some of these rhythms, which are these rhythms that we're teaching, uh, rhythms for the djembe, rhythms for, uh, for, Kong, uh, for the conga and for uh, the ingoma, <clears throat> are very spiritual rhythms that actually are very healing and used for different purposes. And so when you hear those rhythms played the way they're meant to be played, basically, you have a much different type of experience because you're hearing conversations of, of language. Um, whereas when you go to a drum circle, sometimes people are just kind of beating on stuff. It's fun, you know, it's like for some people it's really fun and it's like an activity. Um, whereas something that's more organized where you kind of learn, uh, learn a rhythm and, and keep apart it gives you a lot more cognitive uh, development in terms of you know holding the you know holding that part and having to focus on and concentrate and develop the skill level. Um, it's much more beneficial to you, um, even if you're not even if you're not don't want to become a professional drummer. So while drum circles are good in one sense. I also, you know, uh, even though this is called the virtual drum circle. <laughs> I'm, oh, this, remember, we're calling this one a rhythm circle because people are using all sorts of things. So this is more about rhythm than drum specifically, right? Yeah, well, you know, uh, I think that when they say, when you say drum circle, uh, the connotation is that people bring whatever they can and they just kind of play along. Okay. Um, here, you're kind of learning, um, different rhythms, the meanings of the rhythms, how those rhythms fit together like a puzzle. So um, when you feel that, it's a different kind of feeling and you, you, and because you have to realize that, you know, we pay attention to what we, um, what we ingest into our bodies, like uh, different types of food. Do we eat too much sugar? Uh, do we, you know, try to stay away from certain carbohydrates or oil or fatty, foods and stuff like that but we never realize what we're putting in our ear we ingest information um, that affects our affects our brain so um, I don't want to I'm not trying to put down drum circles um, and say uh, that's you know that's you know don't waste your time don't go to a drum circle I'm saying that um, it's okay but it's sort of like um, the difference between um, eating really good foods that are good for your body and just sort of like eating anything. Um, I don't want to make it, I'm not putting down drum circles because I've participated in drum circles before, but when it's or very organized and people are playing parts and you learn a little bit about the history and you have a different kind, you get a different kind of feeling from, from that music. Make sense? It does. And thank oh, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was actually a, a great note to close on because you're right. Time flies when you're having fun. And I'd like to encourage everyone who has joined us today. If it was your first time, thank you for joining us. Um, you can find us at www.aarp.org slash MI. And um, next month we will have Bujo, Kevin Jones, and Martine Jones. So. Have a, you have to change it. We will. Ch we will absolutely change it. And by the way, Martine, you're also the star of the show because there are always great comments about how well you're doing. And just so everyone knows, Martine is not a drummer. She just, thank goodness, helped us out. So Kevin would have, so Bujo would have someone to play with, and not have the distortion of, um, you know, different pauses in the internet. So thank you both for joining us today. And for our viewers, please visit our website. We do this the third Saturday of every month. Enjoy your Juneteenth and um, love birds. Enjoy the wedding next week. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay.
closing room. Okay.